Sherry here and welcome to Homemade Christmas Series. And we are making food gifts today again. So I am, this is something that I make. I've been making it for quite a few years. Sometimes I only make it every other year so people don't get sick of it. It's um, for apple cider and it's a combination of spices and dried fruit and you add it to apple juice you heat it up and it's a nice hot drink that's non-alcoholic and you don't add any sugar to it and people really quite enjoy it sometimes I serve it at Thanksgiving and but when you have a large crowd, you don't have any extra room on the stove. <laughs> I never do anyway, so I usually just uh, I have a small crock pot, slow cooker, whatever you want to call it, and then I can put it somewhere else and everybody helps themselves, and it makes your house smell wonderful. I will link it all. I'll write it all out in the description below so you can copy and paste it if you want to have it. So, first thing we need is cinnamon sticks. So we need cinnamon sticks. And sometimes you can just break them up with your hands, but that's not going to work. So you just wrap them in a tea towel. And uh, how am I going to show you? And you're going to end up with that. And we're going to dump it in a bowl. So I know if I pick this up and show it to you, it's going to fall in. So yes, I've already, so you need 25 two inch cinnamon sticks. Now you don't really have to measure them with a ruler. So what else do we need? Oh, some of these are really hard to break. Sometimes you can just break them. So once we need to beat up. So we need some whole nutmegs. So that's what nutmeg looks like. So there's some, so we need six of those. So you need to beat the bejesus out of those. So you just put them in a tea towel and hammer away at them. So I'll show you what those look like after they get broken up. We need a quarter of a cup of whole allspice. So there's some whole allspice. A lot of you probably already know what it looks like. Looks like really big peppercorns, but it's allspice. So we get some of that. And we need a quarter of a cup. I'm just using a dried of cloves. Here. There's the label. <laughs> Backwards. So a quarter cup of cloves. Dump that in there. And we need some crystallized ginger. This is, I'm sure it comes in other ways. And you just need to chop it up. in there. We also need some dried orange peel. I already put it in. And some dried lemon peel. So where on earth? And then so you just peel your lemon or your orange and then you cut you put it in the microwave and then you cut it up. I use pair of scissors. Put 
fascinating. So we have all our nutmegs beaten up. That's what they look like beaten up. I just took the rolling pin and the tea towel and they broke up nicely. You can use a hammer. So I still have one lemon left. So I just use a vegetable peeler. And you lay it out on paper towel. <coughs> Excuse me. You lay it out on paper towel and put it in the microwave. This does make a very nice drink. And people that say, oh, I don't think I'll like it, usually are quite surprised and really enjoy it. And it's good for the entire family. Because kids sometimes like it too, so it's it's a cozy drink. I think it it makes your house smell lovely, and everybody feels nice and cozy at home when they walk into the house and smell it. So you don't want your peel to touch other peel. So, because it'll burn. So we're going to put that in the microwave. Let's see what it looks like. And it smells like Christmas. So we got our orange peel, our lemon peel, our cinnamon, allspice, ginger. It has everything in here. Cloves. So now, we are supposed to take three tablespoons. So three generous tablespoons. Now that's actually a tablespoon. That's the tablespoon I'm going to use. Now let's see how... That is going to work. I can't see what I'm doing. I guess about the same. But I'm going to use this one. So, I have a piece of cheesecloth and I have that all in the middle. So if you've ever made pickles and had to put a spice bag in something this is how you do it. So some people just wrap it up. Because this is a drink thing and I'm going to be giving it away I just fold it up like so Kind of like a hobo bag. And then I just tie it really tight. Now, the only problem with this is people are like, oh, I want to know what's in there. And then they open it. Well, if you put all that into a drink, it's going to be hard to get it out. So... That's why it's in the spice bag to save you the time from just train, straining it, which maybe is not a big deal. But people who don't know what this is, they usually, curiosity kills the cat and they have to look inside it. <laughs> So, I've often wondered, hmm, 
So you could write it in. So just keep that in mind if you're making, if you're going to make these. You don't need to open them. And then I tie it up really tight so it won't open while it's sitting in your apple juice or your mulled wine. I cut that off and make sure that's like I chop it off right about there. And I put a couple of them in a plastic or cellophane bag. They keep them airtight with directions on what it is and what to do with it. Like I type it up on a little note. Now I went one step further this year. And if you want to see, I made little bags out of cheesecloth. And you're thinking, what? I just thought it would be easier because then it's easier if you're tying a bunch of these up really tight it's sometimes hard to do by yourself so I thought it would be easier to put them in these little drawstring bags and there will be video on how to make these at the end of this one so you just Go over here so you can see. One, let's see if they're big enough. Two, and three. And then if you tie it so people can open it, and then just put that in your instructions. Make sure that's tied tight. Dump the whole thing, bag and all, in. So this is cheesecloth that's used for kitchen stuff and 100% cotton all-purpose kitchen string. That's it. So yes, this is a little expensive to make. Some people already have whole nutmeg in their kitchen. They prefer to use it. Like one nutmeg would do you a really long time. So you need six of those and then because you can go to a bulk food store and just buy exactly what you need and I will have the recipe all written down. So cinnamon sticks, people often use those at Christmas time. You're going to have them anyway. It sounds like a lot, but it's the way they have it written down, 25, 2 inch cinnamon sticks I suppose I could have figured out a weight and wrote that down but you can see that you just beat everything up I'm pretty sure it's going to smell like cinnamon so video on how to make these very quick and easy nothing complicated I assure you I figured it out so you wouldn't have any crazy strings. And that's doubled. I hope you enjoy that or if you make something similar. Or maybe you use something like that and make mulled wine at Christmas time for your family. Enjoy! I just use cheesecloth that comes like this. I cut off nine inches. So you have a fold here on this side and your salvage edges on this side. So I open it up. And cut along that crease. Set that one aside and you want to create your channel for your drawstring bag.
want to get rid of all those raw edges. So finger press that and then do it again. So no raw edges. And then fold it up to the salvage. And then we're going to sew that and then sew there. So you have a channel. So we're going to take it to the sew machine. That finger press, you can always iron it if you want to make sure it's really pressed. And so there's, we're going to sew along here to sew that piece down so it doesn't unfold and get loose threads and then sew another one right along there. I'm going to use a three lengths. So there, hopefully you can see that. So now I'm going to fold it in half, doesn't matter which way, and we don't have to worry about this here, you'll see why in a minute. So I have folded edge here, both sides, so I'm going to sew here, we're going to do a French seam. So now we're going to trim that. And then we're going to turn it inside out. You can iron it if you like. Press it so it's nice and flat. So then we're going to do another line of stitching here. And so we're going to stitch along here and across the bottom. So I stitched across there and across the bottom. Now I'm going to turn it right side out. And then I'm going to get a piece of cotton string to put in the top. So we need around 12-13 inches of all-purpose string. We're going to use our little bobbit or bob bobkin bobkin. And we're not going to go all the way through.
So it's not all the way through on that side. This stuff is so holy that this is going to work. At the opposite side on this one. And it's okay if it goes through that part there. So you wouldn't be able to use a safety pin. Because it would obviously get attached. There. 